Before we start the lecture of engineering plastics, so I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Won Ho Jo, Professor Emeritus of Department of Material Science and Engineering, Seoul National University. So engineering plastics is roughly defined as a group of plastic materials that have better mechanical and or thermal properties than the more widely used commodity plastics such as polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, polyethylene, and polypropylene. And therefore, engineering plastics are more expensive than commodity plastics. Engineering plastics are produced in lower quantities and therefore used for smaller or low volume objects. So engineering plastics are easy to manufacture, especially in complicated shapes. Typical examples of engineering plastics include polyamides that are used for skis and ski boots, and polyesters that are used for housings in electronics, and polycarbonates that are used in motorcycle helmets, etc. Uh, this figure shows the classification of plastics according to the end use temperatures. So when the end use temperature of plastics is lower than 100 degrees centigrade, and then the plastics are classified as commodity plastics. For example, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, ABS, etc. When the end use temperature of the plastics is higher than 100 degrees centigrade, and then the plastics are classified engineering plastics. For example, polyamide 6, polyamide double 6, and polyethylene terephthalate here and uh, polybutylene terephthalate, and polycarbonate and polyphenylene ether, or polyether sulfone and polyphenylene sulfones. Particularly, when the end use temperature is higher than 20 deg 200 degrees centigrade, and then the plastics are classified as super engineering plastics, such as polymide, polyether ether ketone, and polyphenylene sulfide, etc. In the first part of the, my lectures, so we'll cover polyamide 6 and polyamide 6, PET and PVT, and so on. In the second part of, of, of these lectures, so we'll cover polycarbonate and polyphenylene ether, polyether sulfone, polyphenylene sulfone, including the superengineering plastics, such as the polyamide, the polyether ether ketone, and polyphenylene sulfones. Sulfide. The first example of engineering plastics is polyamides. Chemical structure shown here, this is amide group is repeatedly along the polymer chains. So R could be aliperic or aromatics. So according to the composition of their main chains, synthetic polyamides are classified as follows. The first polyamide family is aliperic polyamides, in which main chain is mainly consists of aliphatic groups. The typical examples of polyamides, the aliphatic polyamides is nylon double six, nylon six, and nylon double six. The examples of commercial products are Zytel, that is produced by DuPont company, Tecnil by Solvay company, Lepipol by Ladies companies. Second family of polyamide is polyphthalamides, in which main chain consists of aliphatic and aromatics, so called semi-aromatics. An example of polyphthalamide is PA6 T, which will be discussed in more detail later. And third family of polyamide is aramis. The name of aramis come from AL from ar uh, aromatics and amide from polyamides. In other words, the aramis is nothing but aromatic polyamides. So in this polyamides, the main chain consists of fully aromatics. So typical example of polyamides are synthesized by reacting paraphenylene diamine with terephthalic acid. The examples of commercial products are Kevlar, Nomex, that are produced by DuPont, and Technola uh, by Tejin Japan, and Comel and Comel Company. There are two types of polyamides. The first type of polyamides are synthesized from diamine and diacid. 
This diacid is reacted with diamines to produce polyamides with the removal of water molecules here. This polymer is named nylon. Nylon is actually is a trade name of Japan, but nowadays nylon is, has been used as a common, common names, so that the nylon is more commonly used instead of a polyamide. Now nylon XY, X is number, this is the first number X, is the number of carbon atoms in diamond units here. And Y is the carbon number in diester units. And the second method of, uh, uh, of polyamides are synthesized from lactams to uh, omega amino acid. This is caprolactam, is polymerized by ring opening polymerizations to produce nylon 6. This is the, the carbon number in repeating unit is just a 6, the one type of carbons. And therefore, this polymer is named nylon 6 or polyamide 6. This omega, the canic acid, this is amino acid, is a self polymerized to produce nylon 11. 11 means the number of carbons in the repeating unit here is 8, 9, 10, C. Carbon is C also carbon, and therefore the total number of carbons in the repeating unit is 11. And therefore this polymer is named nylon 11. So several examples of aliphatic polymides are shown here. So what is the name of these chemical structures? This is named as nylon 46. 4, 4 is the number of carbon atoms in diamine unit. So when you look at these chemical structures, 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons in diester units. In other words, tetramethyl diamine has been used to produce nylon 46. What is 6? Six? 6 comes from the number of carbon atoms in diester units. So when you look at it here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5, 6. So the total number of the carbon atoms in diester unit must be 6. And therefore, this polymer is named nylon 46. What is the name of, uh, uh, name of these polymers? This is nylon 6, because only one type of carbons, this carbon number is 5 or 6. Therefore, this polymer is named as nylon 6. So when you look at these chemical structures, this, is named, this polymer is named nylon 6, 6. 6, 6 comes from the number of carbon atoms in diamine unit. So this is the, the hexamethylene diamine unit, right? And this is reacted with the adipic acid. So total number of carbons in adipic acid must be 4, 5, 6. And therefore, this polymer is named nylon 6, 6. So now so you can name this, uh, uh, the polymers, so nylon 6. So how, how many carbon numbers in diacetyl unit? 8, 9, 10. And therefore, this polymer must be named as nylon 6, 10. What about this one? This is nylon 11, so 10, 11. What about this one? Nylon 12, 11, 12. So among these, nylon 6 and nylon double 6 is mostly used and most commercially available. An example of polyeptaloamide has been synthesized by reacting hexamethylene diamine here with terephthalic acid uh, to, with the removal of water molecules. So this polymer is named nylon 6T. Six come from the number of carbon atoms in diamine units here. So instead of a number here T, T come from terephthalic acid so that this polymer is named nylon 6T. An example of aromatic polyamide, so aramis, has been synthesized by reacting uh, the uh, benzene diamines with an terephthalic acid with removal of water molecules to produce the aramid molecules. So the majority of nylons are semi-crystallines. So why these polymers show semi-crystalline behaviors? So when you look at this, uh, uh, the figures, the nylon 6, 6 chain here, there is many hydrogen bonding between nylon 6 chains. So these hydrogen bondings, the polymers uh, pack together, and therefore the nylon double 6 shows a crystalline uh, behaviors. So when you look at the hydrogen bonding in aramid, so you may realize that Hydrogen bonding density of aramid is higher than the 
uh, the hydrogen bonding density of nylon double six. And therefore, you may expect that in the physical or mechanical and thermal properties of aramids is higher than, much better than nylon double six. Indeed, the aramid is not solubly in organic solvent, and aramid it does not melt, and therefore, aramid is only soluble in sulfuric acids. Hence, the aramid is not classified as thermoplastics. The aramids have a polyamor, a polyaramids has good properties. They have a good abrasion resistance and good dielectrical insulator and low temperature and humidity. And they show exceptionally good resistance to hydrocarbons, esters, alkyl halides, and glycols. They also show good resistance to alkalis. They also have bad properties. TG is relatively low, and therefore, the polyamides show that some are flexible at room temperatures. They also show poor resistance to alcohols, formic acid, acetic acid, phenols, and poor resistance to mineral acid, particularly nitric acid. And they are very hygroscopic, and they also show poor UV and weathering characteristics. And there are several structural factors to influence the properties of aliphatic polyamides. The first factor to influence the thermal property of aliphatic polyamides is the distance between repeating amide groups. In other words, the shorter the distance between amide groups, in other words, the alkyl group will be short, and then the density, the tensile strength, the rigidity, the melting temperatures, the heat diffraction temperature, the resistance to hydrocarbons, and the resistance to water absorption will be increased. Shorter alkyl groups, the better properties. Another factor to influence the thermal properties of polyamides is the number of methylene groups in the intermediate, so-called odd even effect. In other words, polymers with even number of methylene groups have a higher melting points than similar polymers with odd number of methylene groups. This figure shows the melting point versus number of carbon atoms in diamine chains. Diacid is fixed. A is a sebaric acid, adipic acid, B is a sebaric acid. Now, when you look at this point, this is carbon number of, uh, of the diamine unit is a four, and therefore tetrametylene diamine has been used to produce nylon 4 6. 6 means the adipic acid. So the melting point of nylon 4 6 is 280 degrees centigrade. But if you increase the methylene group, in other words, this point, so when you use the pentamethylene diamine has been used to produce nylon 5 or 6 here, the melting point to drop to 225 degrees centigrade. Now, so when you increase the methylene groups in the 6 here, so in other words, so when you used the hexamethylene diamines to produce nylon 6 or 6, and then the melting point goes up, up to 265 degrees centigrade. And if you further increase the methylene groups, number of methylene groups is nylon, this is, this corresponds to nylon 7, 6. And the melting point dropped to gain 225 degrees centigrade, up and down. This behavior is called odd even effect. So another factor to influence physical properties of polyamide is molecular weight. In general, the higher the mole higher molecular weight, the higher the molecular weight, the higher the melt viscosity is. Another important factor to control the properties of aliphatic polyamides is N substitutions. Now, when you look at here, this represents the chemical structure of nylon 6. Now, the amide hydrogen is replaced by methyl groups or methoxymethyl groups, and then the replacement will cause reduction in interchain attractions because of loss of hydrogen bonding, and therefore the polymers decrease in stopping point. Another important method to control the properties of aliphatic polyamides is copolymerizations. In general, 
copolymerization usually leads to less crystalline and sometimes amorphous materials. So these materials are very tough, lead-like, and flexible, and transparent. And polyamides has uh, many applications, such as mechanical engineering parts, and cams, and gears, um, brushings, and bearings, and vulva seats, and films made of nylon 6 or nylon double 6. Their films can be used for foodstuff and pharmaceutical packagings. Fibers are also made of polyamide, particularly nylon 6 and nylon double 6. And then the fibers can be used. Teeth, plus, uh, teeth brush tutting, and suit, uh, surgical shooters, and wearing apparels looks like this, and parachute cloth and rope, tire coat here. Tire coat is the most important application of nylon 6 or nylon double 6, and the sport equipment. And also, polyamides can be used for automobile components and applying housings for spatula, blades, and spoons, etc. A second example of engineering plastics polyesters, chemical structure shown here. The ester group is repeated along the polymer chains. The poly polyesters are polymers that contain ester functional group in the main chains. Polyesters are synthesized by polycondensation of diacetyl diols, or polyesters can be synthesized, synthesized by ring opening polymerization of lactone or lactides. So when you look at this chemical reaction scheme here, diester is reacted with diols to produce polyesters. Or caproractones. This polycaproractone is polymerized by ring opening polymerization to produce polycaproractone, so-called PCL. Here this ester group is repeated along the polymer chains, and therefore polycaproractone is one of polyesters. What about this one? This is lactide dimers. This lactase dimer is also ring, uh, polymerized by ring opening polymerization methods to produce polylactide. This is COO ester group here. So this ester group is repeated along the polymer chains. Now, this is all an acid. Uh, this, this glycolic acid. This glycolic acid is self polymerized to produce polyglycolic acid. So one of typical examples of polyesters is polyethylene tephthalate, so-called PET. PET has been synthesized by two different processes. One is the TPA process, the other one is the TMT process. In the TPA process, tephthalate acid is reacted with ethylene glycol to produce a PET with the removal of water molecules. In the DMT process, Instead of TTA, uh, TPA, they use this dimethyl terephthalate. So dimethyl terephthalate is reacted with the ethylene glycol to produce the polyethylene terephthalate with the removal of, in this case, the methanol. The TPA process is currently more favored than in industry. Now, there are two characteristic features for synthesis of polyethylene terephthalate. The first characteristic feature is the EG is typically charged in excess of acids to, acids to the form dihydroxyethylene tephthalate. So when you look at this one, this is a TPA or DMT reacted with the ethylene glycol. In this case, ethylene glycol is charged in excess. For example, the mole ratio of a TPA to EG is 1 to 2. And then this is a this hydroxyethylene tephthalate is first formed. And then if you further increase the reaction temperatures, and then finally you obtain polyethylene tephthalate through the removal of, in this case, ethylene glycol. And another the characteristic feature of uh, the, the synthesis of polyethylene, glycol, polyethylene tephthalate is solid state polymerizations. So in order to obtain very high molecular weight PET, you may use the solid state polymerization method. This, the po solid state polymerization, so called SSP, is carried out at the temperature between melting point of PET, that is 260 degrees centigrade, and the glass transition temperature of PET is about 80 degrees centigrade. And then the solid state polymerization is carried out 
at the temperature in between the, the melting point and glass transit temperature of PET. In this case, the vacuum or inert gas inside solid state polymerization chamber ensures the removal of ethylene glycol or water molecule. So the, uh, the uh, PET has many uh, good properties. The, uh, the PET has good dielectrical, uh, dielectrical insulating properties, good resistance to most acids, alcohols, greases, and diodes. So PET show excellent gas barrier properties. And the PET is very safe for food content, and the cost of PET is very low. However, PET has bad properties. PET is flammable, and PET has poor weathering performance. The application of PET is very wide. The fibers can be made of PET, and the fibers can be used for textiles and apparel, and also used for tire coat. The tire coat is also a very important application of PET, and bottles for carbonated drinks, because this PET is excellent, shows excellent gas barrier properties, and therefore the bottles made from uh, uh, this PET can be used for carbonized drinks, such as Pepsi, Coke, and beers, and juice, oils, and foods, because this the PET is very safe for food content, and therefore the bottles for the juice and foods can be used, and cups made of PET. Now, a second example of polyesters is polybutylene triphthalate. So instead of ethylene glycol, in this case, butandiol has been used. So butandiol is reacted with terephthalic acid to produce first bis-hydroxybutylene triphthalate. In this case, also the excess of butandiol has been used. And then if you further increase the reaction temperatures, this BHBT is transformed to polybutylene triphthalate. And the temperature of first step, first step is 150 to 210 degrees centigrade. And second step, the temperature must be 260 degrees centigrade. In this case, so titanium alkoxide has been used as a catalyst. So the glass transition temperature PBT is 45 degrees centigrade. This is lower than glass transition temperature of PET. So melting point of PBT is 225 degrees centigrade, which is also lower than the melting point of P PET. So however, PBT has many good properties. PBT, is, uh, PBT has uh, high crystallinity. The crystallinity of PET reaches up to 60%, and PBT shows the faster crystallization than the PET. And the PBT is easily blended with other polymers, such as PET and polycarbonate. And PBT is easily reinforced by inorganic fillers, such as glass fiber, talc, clay, silica, mica, glass bead, and carbon fibers. However, PBT shows bad properties. That is, PBT is a translucent. translucent. That means PBT is not so transparent. PBT is more expensive than PBPET. And PBT also shows flammable, flammabilities. And therefore, we need to use flame retardants. The application of PBT is injection molded parts, such as application in automotive, electrical and electronic devices, healthcare, and building and constructions, and fibers and films is, can be made of PBT. So this is the this is a cover of automatic, uh, automotive and headlight and the door lock in a car. And this is uh, the computer housings and cams. This is uh, the swimming suit and many of the electrical electronic parts. Now, another important polyesters that can be used for so the practical application is polyesters based on cyclohexane dimethanols. Now, instead of ethylene glycols, in these cases, cyclohexane dimethanols. So cyclohexane dimethanol has two isomers, 
the transform and cis bonds. This terephthalic acid is reacted with cyclohexanthimethanol to produce polycyclohexyl terephthalate. This PCT is a crystalline polyesters with a very high melting temperatures and the better wettability, high glass transition temperatures, and higher heat distortion temperature than PET. And several random copolyesters polyesters containing cyclohexanthimethanol and ethylene glycol units have been reported. This table shows the cyclohexanthimethanol derived polyesters and their copolyesters. Now, this terephthalic acid is reacted with cyclohexanthimethanol to produce polycyclohexyl terephthalate. Now, the so terephthalic acid, a mixture of terephthalic acid and isophthalic acid. Isophthalic acid. And this, the, the diacid is reacted with cyclohexanthimethanol to produce PCTA. So when you look at these chemical structures, this is a cyclohexyl, uh, cyclohexanthimethanol unit. And I'm sorry, this is the uh, terephthalic acid unit. This is isophthalic acid unit. So another the, the random copolymer is the TPA is reacted with cyclohexanthimethanol and ethylene glycol mixtures to produce PETZ. So when you look at this chemical structure, this is ethylene unit. This unit corresponds to hexamethylene dimethanol unit. So when the CHDM content is less than 50%, the polymer is called the PETZ. If the content of CHDM is higher than 50%, and then the polymer is named as PCTZ. It's the same random copolymers, just the difference between these two polymers is the content of CHDM. So another, uh, the polyesters is, instead of using the terephthalic acid, we may use cyclohexyl dicarboxylic acid. This the cyclohexyl dicarboxylic acid is reacted with this cyclohexan dimethanol to produce PCCD. Now, and this, the polymers based on cyclohexanthimethanol has many good properties. For example, they show high impact strengths. They exhibit good chemical and hydrolysis resistance, the high transparencies, particularly the melting point of the polymer is very high. For example, trans-cyclohexyl dimethanol-based polyesters as 315 to 320 degrees centigrade, which is much higher than the melting point of PET or PVT. And glass transition temperature of the cyclohexyl dimethanol based polyesters is 6, 9, uh, 95 degrees centigrade, which is also higher than glass transition temperatures of PET and PVT. And they also show excellent transparencies and good UV stability and weatherability, and they are miscible with the polycarbonate, and they show the resistance to photo oxidations. So they can be used for many applications, such as textile fiber, and they can be used for a connector and containers and bro molded bro bottles and packaging films, etc. Now, the last example of polyesters is polyethylene naphthalate, so-called PEN. In this polyethylene naphthalate, so instead of terephthalic acid, here's naphthalene dicarboxyl acid has been used as diester part, and this naphthalene dicarboxyl acid is reacted with ethylene glycol to produce polyethylene naphthalate with the removal of water molecules. So typical PEN polymerization processes are very similar to those of PET and PVT. So using the excess diol to acids 2 to 1 in the first stage and temperature range of 150 to 240 degrees centigrade, followed by further polymerizations under vacuum at 290 degrees centigrade. Now, so instead of ethylene glycols, we may use a propylene glycol or butan diols to produce polypropylene naphthalate or polybutylene naphthalate. 
Uh, this table shows the thermal data of naphthalene polyesters. The PEN, polyethylene naphthalate, PPN is a polypropylene naphthalate, and PBN is a polybutylene naphthalate. So this glass transition temperature of melting temperature of PN is 122 and 270 degrees centigrade respectively. Now, so when the increased methylene groups, ethylene and propylene and butylene, and the glass transition temperature will be decreased. So however, if you look at the melting temperatures, you may realize that there is odd even effect. This other number, ethylene, melting point at 270 degrees centigrade, on propylene is uh, this even number, this other number, and the melting point dropped to 207, and then polybutylene is this, uh, this even number, and the melting point goes up again is 243 degrees centigrade. And therefore, there is an other even effect in these polyesters. Uh, the polyethylene naphthalate has many good properties, such as glass transition temperature and melting temperature of polyethylene naphthalate and higher than PET. And PEN shows superior gas barrier performance compared to PET. PEN is, has a better chemical oxidative and hydraulic stability than PET, and good UV barrier performance and PVT is superior to PET during weatherings. And therefore, this uh, PEN has many applications, such as fibers. Fibers can be made of PEN, uh, PEN. And films can be made of PEN. The films can be used for storage tapes, integrated circuit cards, capacitors, electrical insulations, and batteries, and optics. And they can be used for containers, so for uh, food and beer, carbonated drinks, half filled juices, and cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. pharmaceuticals. Here is the tape, and uh, it's in the bottles for medicines, and this PVT can be applied to prepare to make these beakers and test tube. And here's this ITO, ITO means indium uh, uh, tin oxide, is coated onto PN film, and therefore, ITO coated PM film can be used for transparent electrode. Now, this is the end of first part of engineering plastics, and then second part will be continued following the first part of this lecture. Thank you.